Hi everyone, hope you're all having an awesome day. In this video, I would like to briefly review the Laoba 25mm 2.5 to 5x uh, lens, which I purchased just over a week ago. And uh, I spent at least, I'd say, five to six hours on average every single day the past uh, week or so, eight or nine days. And I've taken uh, about a thousand images uh, with it. And I'd like to share my first impressions. The build quality uh, is pretty amazing. It has plenty of uh, metal in the construction, barely any uh, plastic. It doesn't feel cheap uh, whatsoever. The magnification ring is quite hard to turn. If I go from 2.5 magnification to 5x all the way out, as you can see, it's I wanted to show you it's not even as long a little bit uh, longer than the 100 millimeter uh, lens from uh, Canon this is the L series I think the second uh, version oops I can feel the image stabilization or the floating elements moving so you can see how much bulkier this one is uh, compared to the Laowa and that's one of the main advantages in this case actually because makes it uh, so much more um, easy to get down low or on level with a small insect um, and um, also if uh, you walk around you know in lush uh, amongst lush vegetation you don't bump into a, a leaf or a small branch that the insect is sitting on and it makes your life so much easier so uh, in terms of usability in the field, this uh, has a huge advantage uh, over the Canon. It does not have uh, aperture coupling, which uh, means you cannot uh, electronically change the aperture or via the camera, you have to do it uh, manually. It has um, four settings uh, indicated on the front uh, section. It goes from 2.8 all the way up to f16. Um, I took some test shots and I'd say 2.8 is a little bit um, soft but once uh, you go up to f5.6 which I think is probably the sharpest um, aperture and f8 is essentially in the same ballpark. These two apertures f5.6 and f8 is what I would recommend if you end up uh, getting uh, this ultra macro lens but f16 is where the image i think starts to fall apart in terms of uh, diffraction it gets a bit uh, muddy and um, the contrast the micro contrast is not um, not that good so i wouldn't recommend using it at f16 unless uh, you need to this small lens barrel i just wanted to talk about that uh, a little bit more as you can see the diameter is so small and um, this opening is tiny as well which actually comes super handy when you shoot at uh, extreme magnification i mean i would say 5x is quite extreme especially on an aps-c sensor because of the crop factor that's essentially or virtually 8x magnification so this small uh, lens barrel makes it so much easier to find the subject uh, through the uh, viewfinder. And uh, before I forget the other thing, because of the lack of uh, aperture coupling, um, even at 2.8, at 2.5x, the viewfinder can be quite dark, especially on an overcast day. When it's sunny, then it's not an issue. But if you go up to 5x magnification and you want to try that f16, which is virtually, uh, what's the formula? Um, magnification plus one multiplied by the uh, f-stop gives you the, um, um, how do you call it? The effective um, f-stop number or effective aperture, which would be, what? I can't calculate, f96. So that's absurd. Plus the... Uh, crop factor comes into play so it's one f144 or something so you can imagine the lack of light that uh, comes through and uh, it's impossible to see anything through the uh, viewfinder and that's why that's 
the other reason why um, I purchased. I'm gonna just retry this before I bump it into something. That is why I purchased. Let's put the landscape back on. There you go. What is on this lens? Need to clean it again. So that is why I purchased this um, LED front light, which goes on. Oh, actually, I'm gonna take it off because I wanna demonstrate something in a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I purchased this um, LED front light or ring light from Laova, which was specifically designed for the 25 millimeter uh, ultra macro lens and. Um, you have to connect it to an external um, power bank or battery pack or whatever. And you can see how powerful this light is. Wow, it's blinding actually. So I wanted to review this uh, light a little bit. I'm going to switch it off. Uh, the build quality again, really nice, sturdy, very um, well constructed I'd say. Unfortunately I've already dropped it onto concrete because once you put this on into the lens it doesn't have a locking mechanism so it just slides off very easily especially when you are constantly moving amongst the you know branches or you have to crash down squat down get down low because you move around immediately it falls off so that's so silly i don't know why they did not have some sort of um, as i said locking mechanism in place or why they didn't design it uh, uh, a little bit more carefully or thoughtfully but hopefully they will release another um, version or a new version of this um, so that's a big uh, negative the uh, other thing um, is that I would have preferred for it to have an on off uh, button because you constantly have to disconnect it from the power bank so and I don't want to use it you know all the time and um, it depends on uh, how much ambient lighting is available and uh, the other thing is obviously when you are that close to your subject with this lens even at 2.5x which as I said on the APS-C it's essentially 4x you need to be so close the working distance is 45 millimeter at 2.5x and uh, comes down to 40 millimeters so 4 centimeters um, at 5x and this particular ring light it's so powerful and leaves especially on iridescent or highly reflective um, insects bugs uh, or any kind of texture it uh, leaves uh, a very strong specular highlight so you gotta be careful or have uh, take that into consideration uh, when you are taking images of that sword or the subject is prone to reflecting the light uh, so that can be another issue Overall, it's very useful because, as I said, the viewfinder can be super dark at times. So this comes very handy. The power bank, again, I mean, it's a pain to carry it around. I decided to purchase a special, uh, what is it, like a fishing uh, vest that you can use for uh, photography as well because it has plenty of uh, pockets uh, inside and outside, plenty of compartments, so I'll be able to just attach it and then access it much easier than right now when I have to put it in my pocket and then just fiddle with it constantly which is not a good idea overall I've been loving this lens it's been uh, awesome to shoot with I think the um, image quality is pretty amazing the images uh, came out really sharp plenty of contrast and uh, overall I'm super happy with it I might even uh, invest into another Laowa lens. I've been looking at the 100mm uh, apochromatic or apochromatic, I don't know how to pronounce that, um, 2x um, magnification lens. And uh, maybe that will be um, on, uh, that will be heavily discounted during the Black Friday sale. So I'll keep an eye out for that. And um, that's about it. I think we should have a look at the images, the test uh, shots that I've taken and uh, Hope you guys um, got something out of this. If you end up purchasing, as I said, either of these two items, then um, just um, uh, be aware of their shortcomings or what to expect from them. I think uh, you guys are gonna be happy with it if you 
choose to pick up uh, any of these. Let's have a look at the shots. So this is one of the first stacked images that I took. This was of a um, dead cicada that I found just outside uh, in our driveway. We have a Swiss cheese pint um, in our driveway that's been covered in cicadas for the past uh, few days and I uh, found a dead one. And I took this uh, stack shot uh, uh, a few days ago. Obviously, uh, as you can see, it's not perfectly sharp. I missed a couple of uh, shots at different focal planes. It's almost impossible um, to take super sharp, uh, crisp uh, shots without a macro rail, which I just uh, purchased off uh, Amazon, a uh, manual one, as I didn't want to invest into a motorized uh, just yet. I want to get a little bit of a feel for um, deep stack uh, images or macro shots, ultra macro shots uh, before I invest into something like Cognisys or uh, Wii Macro, uh, which is a considerably cheaper option, but uh, looks quite decent in terms of um, quality. So as you can see, it uh, has so much uh, detail. This was taken at 2.5x, as I said, on the APS-C, that's essentially 4x magnification. Um, so I really like this image uh, of this uh, cicada. It looks quite alien-like. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just do that. Second image is um this is a stack shot as well two or three frames i can't remember but you can see the alignment um is not uh, perfect if i zoom in a little bit um you can see a uh, little water droplet or dew or something uh, that it has on its i'm not sure don't ask me what these things are <laughs> If I zoom in, you can see the reflection of my ring light and the flash and the bounce card there, even my finger. I think it was giving birth or something. <laughs> Next image. I took this shot today. It's a stack shot again, not perfect, but I tried to push myself in this instance. This uh, was taken on a small tripod as well and uh, here you can see I missed a couple of uh, stacks because this part was not um, sharp at all but if you zoom in I mean this is my most detailed shot of a fly, a blow fly ever that's crazy so you can see it's super sharp obviously in post I um, used high pass filter and uh, <coughs> in Lightroom I already um, sharpen it a little bit uh, with the brush to you know increase the contrast and the clarity um, and added a bit of texture mm. but looks amazing I can't wait to reshoot this dead fly which I have in this little plastic box <laughs> okay this is unfortunately just a single frame single shot non-stack shot i wish i'd been able to take a picture of it uh, this is a frog hopper i think or plant hopper i don't know uh, this was a fruit fly that i took a picture of today colors are really nice and again i mean the detail is amazing those tiny little hairs just unbelievable that's why i love this lens because with the naked eye you can't capture any of this uh, or you can't see any of this detail unbelievable i love it uh okay next one it's a spittle bug one of my favorite creatures and you can see this is my finger right there the blurred thing <laughs> in the lower left corner i was trying to hold uh, this leaf steady and just move you know the subject uh, closer to the lens because moving the lens itself or your body it's almost impossible to focus uh, on the eye of these super tiny creatures it makes it so difficult so i prefer to move the subject if possible if they're not too skittish or not too uh, timid and they can be handled and if they're cooperative enough then 
you will be successful eventually. I'd say one out of 10 shots will be in focus. <laughs> That's how my hit rate has been so far. This is a crab spider. I really liked, as I said, the low angle that the small lens barrel allows one to um, uh, get down to and then just face the creature, face this type of insects. Uh, with the MP65, the Canon one, which is much more massive, much bulkier, this shot would be almost impossible because you bump into the sleeve, the uh, spider is gone. You can't do anything about it. But with this lens, it makes it so much easier. So, well done, Laowa. That was that was a great um, idea to design it. Uh, that small. They knew what they were doing. Uh, I'm not sure what this is, what this creature is again. Uh, it was super small, I remember. I took this one in the backyard on the brick wall. It was less than half a centimeter, I believe. It was caught up in a spider's web. Couldn't move, so I was lucky to be able to capture it. Um, otherwise, I think it would have been... Uh, would have just uh, flown off. This is a... One of my favorite uh, jumping spider species. Um, not exactly sure of, of the genus. Uh, if uh, you know, then please let me know. This was at uh, 4x magnification, so 6x magnification on the uh, ATD from Canon. And you can see only this part of the eye, of the uh, back eye, is in focus. This one is already uh, quite blurry. Just demonstrating how shallow the depth of field again. Uh, it's, it's just unbelievable. That's super cute. This one is the same species. I'm not sure if it was the, ex the exact same specimen. But again, the level of detail, these tiny little tufts of hair on the side of this uh, little jumping spider is amazing, unbelievable. And look at these hairs, or I don't know, they look like little spikes just crazy fascinating love it okay this was a moth I uh, think I showed you this picture in my previous video I'm gonna spend too much time uh, I have to recover uh, too much time uh, talking about this uh, image I had to recover way too much shadow detail I just couldn't light the uh, subjects uh, and the subject uh, as well as I uh, wanted to I really like the background colors though, it was beautiful and this uh, little plant that it was sitting on. And uh, this is a bronze hopper, a female bronze hopper. And uh, this is one of my sharpest shots uh, <coughs> of this species with this lens. This is a uh, lynx spider. And again, if I zoom in, you can see only this very small section is in uh, complete focus and then it starts to get blurry around this uh, threshold and uh, sharpness gradually decreases past this area as well. This is a beautiful spider, just unbelievable, it looks scary with those spiky long legs, unbelievable, crazy looking creature. Another jumping spider, this was super tiny, I captured this uh, in the backyard again, and all of the jumping spiders tend to be uh, in our backyard, just crawling all over the brick wall and uh, the fence, they love that spot, they just like to um, hunt uh, in that area. Uh, as you can see, the big bulbous eye is just unbelievable, the reflection again. Of my camera is clearly visible in its eye or eyes this is a oh, I don't know what kind of bee it is I've already managed to uh, get an identification on a uh, uh, iNaturalist uh, where I upload most of these images if I zoom in I want to show you guys how amazing are these tiny little golden pollens some of them were stuck on its uh, compound eye as well and how fine are these hairs on its face unreal unreal this is a 
crazy looking uh, plant hopper or leaf hopper look at the silvery metallic uh, texture of its eye just crazy it doesn't even look real it looks like some sort of Pokemon or something <laughs> unbelievable the segmented uh, body this shield like structure sorry I keep putting my uh, hand in front of my mouth which I should stop doing um, anyway let's go to the next one this is a um, let me remember speckled orb uh, weaver how cute is this creature I'm gonna zoom in on its eyes so the sharpness is it's crazy this spider is about this big as well super small super small this one was taken at 2.5x as well I left the sensor dust here too uh, damn it this is a uh, I think a species from the family of catadids or I think so or the other word is or the other name for this is um, bush cricket I think and uh, it looks super big but it is again about I don't know a centimeter long tops and how cool is this uh, really uh, dark vibrant red color of its body unbelievable how long are these horns oh yeah the other uh, name for this species is longhorn grasshoppers now you know why <laughs> that's another picture of it a little bit blurry I think there's a little bit of yeah slight uh, motion blur there but not too bad I got really close it was quite cooperative this one it's another B image Jesus I have to go through these images and remove a couple of dust spots that I missed yeah I mean I wish I'd been able to stack these but I was struggling to get these shots they kept moving around a little bit I really like the composition of this shot though with these uh, what are these called I have no idea next one this is a robber fly and I just wanted to show you this but it's crazy doesn't it look like the uh, height of a lion <laughs> it's just unbelievable this golden color and it looks so hairy and uh, I don't know kind of fluffy to me and this image even though it's only a single frame that just demonstrates the amount of detail that you get with this lens it's just crazy 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 okay next one this fly poor little fly um, must have been parasitized or parasitized there yeah. must have been killed by a parasite which is a special fungus that attacks insects uh, I captured a similar species uh, about a week ago um, at the wetlands um, so I knew what happened to this poor fella I zoom in you can see these little droplets are of fungi unbelievable I just I can't get over the fact how much detail this lens is capable of rendering unreal this is another bronze hopper a female bronze hopper just from the uh, <coughs> back just wanted to show you what they look like from this uh, angle an end shot a little rainbow end with its uh, lava I think it was dead because it wasn't moving and uh, this one was taken at uh, 5x magnification I think so yeah 5x magnification another one so this is one I what I wanted to 
talk to you about these are the highlights that the ring light causes and they look quite ugly so we gotta be careful when uh, shooting with that ring light but I would not have been able to capture it because I would not have been able to focus on on these ends at 5x I would not have been able to see anything through the viewfinder so I had to use it this uh, end was just absolutely annihilating uh, its peer I don't know why but I think they have the same species cannibalistic nature on full display I guess and oh I've got two more images this one was actually one of the first uh, shots that I took with the low balance unbelievable just crazy I poured a little bit of honey on a, a brick wall and uh, just coax them to that spot and hundreds of them gathered around that uh, little drop and this is probably the best image that I managed to take crazy crazy amount of detail yet again and I've got two more shots just of a uh, male bronze hopper these last two shots were all stacked shots three and five shots were stacked respectively and this one had three images how cool is that little hairdo <laughs> unbelievable if I zoom in I mean it's crazy you can see my camera completely it looks like a robot somebody commented on uh, uh, Instagram it looks like a robot <laughs> now I know why it does look like a robot that ring light doesn't is not too uh, conducive to creating a uh, beautiful catch light it looks a bit um, unnatural this one is a bit underexposed I think eh, not too bad a little bit uh, more contrasted than the previous frame but again the detail the intricate level of detail is mind-blowing I just love it how awesome are these translucent transparent legs they look so fragile crazy <laughs> doesn't it look like a human face a mustache anyway I'm super happy with the uh, image quality as I said uh, I think the images uh, speak for themselves Laowa did a pretty good job uh, with this lens and uh, I'm looking forward to maybe purchasing another two uh, macro lenses from their lineup the 15mm f4 um, wide angle one to one macro lens and the um, 100 millimeter 2x. I was considering the 60 millimeter one, but I compared the image quality of those two lenses and the 100 millimeter newer version, which has already uh, electronic uh, aperture coupling. Uh, so the image quality of that one is uh, considerably better, even though it's not as compact, but. I think uh, I'm gonna invest into that as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, you got a little bit of info uh, on the lens and the um, LED ring light. Uh, I'm really loving this lens. I can't wait to shoot again. I've been super hooked on it. I've been shooting every single day and probably will be doing it tomorrow again because the weather is uh, looking pretty good. Thanks again, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please hit subscribe and the like button and see you guys in the next one peace